All right. So I'm going to be presenting a few tips and tricks uh, regarding the Hype Hype app application. And the first one is about how to make flower fields and grasslands. Um, you might have seen in a few hypes that I created that there are a bunch of um, grass on the ground, or there's even a flower field hype that I created that um, that we can select how many flowers you want to create. So like if you want to create 500 flowers or or like 10,000 flowers. And I'm going to explain to you how I did that. Let's clean this up a little bit before before doing that. OK, let's, um, let's pick a grass, like this, this one. OK. Good. In order to do that, we need only a few a few nodes, starting with the for loop. We need a random node, and we need a spawner node. OK, now we have to select the grass for the spawner node, and select the offset as absolute transform. I'll go about that in a minute. So here on the for loop, we select the first index as one and last index as the amount that we want to create from um, the grass here. And we set, we set this to execute on start. Then on loop, we execute this random node. This random node will be used for um, randomizing the position of the of the grass. So we could do something like minus 200 to 200. And then on random value, wait, on random value per link, we set an offset, offset x, without being executing. And then we set the offset z, executing. So it will only execute once per um, per random node execution. And then we have to make sure that this is a reference object. And lastly, we need to set the offset y for the for the spawner. So here you can see that the offset y for the grass, um, position y of the grass when it's on the ground is minus 0.1065. We can copy that. Um, did I do it right? 6.5, yes. Okay. So great, it should work. And you can see that <laughs> I always create a lot of them, precisely a thousand of them. So yeah, this is how we create a, um, a bunch of stuff in the ground, like a grassland. You can always uh, you can also change it to a flower, for example, something like a rose. Then we can, yeah, more or less that minus one two. So you can change the same offset here, and. That's pretty much it. If you think that it's it's not too, uh, if if it a thousand is 
is too few of them, you can increase it. And you get more flowers. And yeah. That's about it. <laughs> Very cool. Right? So I implemented this in a few hypes. Um, I want to show you one of them, which was the penguin header. Do you remember that one? Uh, yeah. Very cool. So yeah, it's, it's here. It's here. So the for loop, the random node, and the spawner. So, um, oh yeah, one thing that I forgot to mention is that the if you want to to set different values for x and z, like different um, boundaries, you have to make two random nodes, like um, if you want the x to be from, I don't know, minus 10 to 10. We can do this like this here. Yeah, we can make on random value. Okay. So the x is from minus 10 to 10, and the z is from minus 200 to 200. So there is a much larger spread of z values than from x values so what we are gonna do is this we're gonna execute this random and then execute this random execute the x first and then the z and you'll see that <laughs> the x is uh, more constrained because it's from minus 10 to 10. so yeah Simple, right? Not too complicated. Very cool. That was my first thought: was putting different values to the to the x and the z. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now on to the next tip. Um, this one was actually a tip that SoulSpark taught me. Shout out SoulSpark. <laughs> um. So this one is about how to use a value inspector <clears throat> to inspect the scale of an object. So as you can see, the value inspector has the uh, can inspect the position of an object, can inspect the direction of an object, which can be uh, used to calculate the rotation. But it has no scale. So you can't um, inspect the scale directly. You have to do it indirectly somehow. And that's where the trick comes in. Like you need a secondary object. Let's use a small ball for it. Small ball. Mm, we have to do it snap on grid. Okay. Great. Okay. So instead of inspecting this cube here, we need to inspect this ball. And I'll go about that in a minute. This ball has to be glued to this cube. Why? Because look at this. We wanna we wanna see um, we wanna inspect the scale of this cube, right? So what happens when this ball is glued to the cube and you scale and you stretch the cube? The ball changes position. So if you, if you inspect the scale of the ball, uh, if you inspect the position of the ball, you'll be effectively inspecting the scale of the cube because uh, let's create another ball just to show you. Okay, so the cube is at y equals 1. 
Okay, so it's the same, same, um, same height. And the ball is at y equals two. So the difference is from one. You can do it here like this, better, right? So the y equals zero, and then the ball is y equals one. So what happens when the cube gets set to scale two? The ball goes to y equals two. So if you set the scale of the cube as three, the ball will be at y equals three. So that's how you can inspect the scale of the cube in an indirect way. Pretty clever, this trick. And you have to inspect the position y in this case. Um, so if you want to inspect, instead of the y scale, if you want to inspect the x scale, all you need to do is to place the ball here and to change the position, change it to inspect the position x. And, okay, hold on. Okay, x equals zero. So when you, okay, ball here, okay, x equals zero, and the ball is at x equals one. So when you scale it to x equals two, the ball goes to x equals two. And it's the same thing, basically. You can do it for the z-axis too. It's, um, it's the same principle. And, okay, there is um, one hype that I used it, which was the hype mania. <clears throat> so you can see here, there are these normal nodes, and there are these hold nodes. The hold nodes are the nodes that you have to Tap the button and hold until the end, like this one here. Hold to the end. And when I was making this this hold note, I I had to know the scale of this note because I didn't want to make the um, people who would remix the hype to type in the the size of the of the hold note through here, through the reusable parameter. I wanted them to scale the, the hold note here and make it work. So how I did that, exactly how I explained. You can see that there is a small ball here. So I did uh, you can see it here, where I was inspecting the position y of this small ball, and then it would um, do all sorts of calculations in order to um, to make the the hype understand when the player should start hitting uh, pressing the, the button and when the player should stop pressing the button. See? Wow. <clears throat> That's a cool one. I'm gonna I'm probably gonna have to watch that again to understand fully what you, what you did there. <laughs> but it was nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. On to the next one. This is something minor. It's about something that I um that I found out not too long ago was in Harrods Tower. Okay, so you can see that the background, like it's not, it's not, um, okay, let's do it this way. I want you to pay close attention to the color of the background. So, 
the color of the background um it's it's not actually gray it's a very dark shade of purple and why is there a difference so let's let's change it to gray so you can understand um color fog color and you can see here it's gray so the equivalent shade of gray would be 0606. 0, 6. Okay, now take a look. This looks a lot, a lot more, it's like a dead color. It looks more, much more dead. And the when you make the tiny change, to make it purple, it becomes somewhat more alive. It looks better. So it is, it's a, a very, very minor change that makes a huge difference. Um, the player will not realize the difference, but if you keep it, keep it, um, keep it gray, the player will see that something looks bad in, in here and this goes to to make you understand that minor changes sometimes make uh, give huge results um, I'm not sure not sure if this stream picked up the difference could you see uh, the difference Shogun yeah, I could see it. Um, I did actually watch it through the, the feed that you're sending me because it's just a little bit bigger on my screen so I could see it more clearly. But yeah, I could see the difference. Yeah. And um, how much time do we have left? Uh, we got about 25 minutes. Okay. Okay, so that is one more thing that I um, thought about explaining today, which is how to make a custom movement system. Because um, sometimes sometimes it's better to customize the, the movement system. And let's start with the penguin header. So, penguin header. Okay, so what is a, a normal movement system? Um, we can use a force node, force node with reset speed, and then we can. I think it's something like like this. No, no, no! It's something like that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And then you have a player. Uh, just a model, please. Okay, could be this one. So set the target as this. And then you use the move magnitude to the Z direction of the force node. And then you set the force node as a local force. And then you use a transform for the rotation of the player. And you use the move angle to the transform. There might have, um, you might have to make a few changes to make this work the intended way but that's basically it you use a transform node to rotate the character and then a force node to push the character forward this is one of the um, movement normal movement types but in penguin header i did want to make something a little bit different i i wanted to make the oh yeah I forgot to delete this one okay let's delete this one so I wanted to make something 
more precise, let's say. So instead of uh, setting the magnitude to the force node directly, or in this case, I use the vector transform, I sent it to a, to a formal node. And what this formal node does is that it takes the magnitude, and by the way, the magnitude has to be from 0 to 1, otherwise this will not work. So the formal node takes the magnitude, it sends it to a power of 1.4, and then multiplies by 0 0.16. And what it does is that it firstly any number that you include here, like for example, let's take this 0.16 out um, for a bit. So if you send it a one magnitude, uh, it will output, let's take, the, take this one out. It will output one. If you send it a zero magnitude, it will output zero. So that's basically the same boundaries of the of the magnitude, but watch what happens when you when you input a zero point five. It goes to zero point three seven eight. So it decreases whatever number you use that isn't the boundaries. See. And that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to make something that um, the player could uh, move with precision. So that's exactly what I did. And then, if we keep the maximum of one magnitude, the player will be sent flying up so fast it will, it will run. So instead of that, we can multiply it by 0 0.16, which gives the um, maximum speed of 0.16 for the player. And then I also had to multiply by minus one, so it wouldn't, so the player wouldn't walk backwards, but I digress. Okay, so this is what, how it happens. So when I move, it always move a little bit less than where the joystick is pointing. So this is the first custom movement that I created. All right. That's another nice one. Another one I'm probably going to have to watch again so that I can use it. <laughs> yeah. So you can you can make a lot of uh, cool stuff using power in the formal node, and the other one, this one was a little bit more complex. It was on the back to the Herod's Tower. <clears throat> okay. So this one, this one was a hard one to make because. Um, just a second. Let's um oh yeah, custom camera. Okay, good. So for the Argari Harold or Harold, I wanted to make him bounce off the walls. So it would bounce off the walls when it would touch it. It would run towards it. So I could not use the vector transform for it. And I couldn't use the reset velocity on the force node. Reset, reset speed on the force node. I had to use a raw force node. A raw force node. But um, 
if I passed forward a um, the magnitude, or in this case, the x axis, it would have a it was having a very um, I don't know how to call it when it was very very slow. Like if when I started moving right, it started very very slow, and then it suddenly became really really fast. Like it had a very steep um, movement acceleration, and I did not want that. So the the idea that I had, the thing that I that worked was when was um, by using a toggle. So I executed the force node every other frame, like once every two frames. And there is some a few other things that I did. Like you can see here that um, when I pass forward the x value of the the joystick to this math operator it multiplies by something before sending the the amount to the first node and this something comes from here which I, i'll not explain everything but the basic idea is that if the player is moving uh is accelerating backwards the acceleration is a lot faster so the player can stop faster see so if i were to um, disable this node the acceleration will always be the same so the player takes a lot longer to to deaccelerate to stop and the other thing that I did was to make a maximum speed. So I used a, a, um, where is it? Okay, here. I used a vector separator from a velocity. Yes, I used a value inspector to take the x velocity or x speed of the character sent in here. So every time, this toggle executes to uh, every time this toggle executes because remember i made it so the toggle would execute every other frame so every time this toggle executes it checks if the maximum speed if the the speed of the character is above the maximum speed and if it is above the maximum speed it doesn't execute the force node so I created a sort of um, a, a movement system that I can control the acceleration, I can control the uh, stopping power, let's say, and it has a maximum speed. So this was the most complex movement system that I've created so far. That's very cool. Very nice solution. Yeah. So that's it for for the tips and tricks. Do you have any questions? Do we have, any questions? have any questions? From the chat, any questions for Sny Viper? And uh, about any of these tips and tricks, any of Sny Viper's hypes, if you have any questions about any of that, now would be a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to go back I think and watch the one where you were where you were uh viewing the scaling. I was like oh, trying to scaling. I'm having an issue with the chat box here on the stream so I was messing with the chat box. I wasn't totally paying attention. But that seemed like a kind oh, of cool sure. little workaround. I'll I'll definitely check that one out again. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh why we don't have any questions in chat, I can explain to you again that part. Um snap to grid. 
okay snap to grid and okay we need a value inspector and a small ball here um all right okay so we want to we want in this case <coughs> to inspect the scale of this of this cube the y scale so uh, as you can see the value inspector can inspect the position it can inspect the direction which can be used to calculate the rotation but it, it can't inspect the scale so how do we do it we use a secondary object we have to glue the secondary object to the main object that we, we want to know the scale of and then we have to inspect the position of this object because as you see uh, let's use a small ball again to to see the the height of the position y of the objects okay so this cube is at scale one the y scale is one and then this ball uh, and so it and it is at the y equals zero position this ball is at y equals one okay first thing you notice is that the scale of this cube is exactly the position of this ball so what happens when we scale this cube to y equals 2 the ball goes up to y equals 2 so the position of the ball here is exactly the same as the scale of this cube and you can do the same thing for for the other axis if you want to check the uh, x scale you can do the same thing but place the ball on this side of the cube so when the cube stretches the ball goes right and then it goes to the um, and then you can see the, the scale of the of the ball that way of the cube sorry that way <laughs> that's cool nice one yeah never would have thought right. of that <laughs> <laughs> and now we have yeah, a couple so questions spark, from the, the chat point. here um pt is interested in the randomly spawning objects does it also work for pre-mades i've never really touched the for loop node yet okay so the for loop node <clears throat> um the for loop node is a node that executes a ton of stuff <laughs> in the same frame so if you want to uh, let's say okay so this um okay let's use a text node for better clarity okay text node text node up there okay so on loop if we add one if we add one every loop for a hundred times it will on the first frame of the hype if we set it to execute on start it will on the first frame of the hype add one to this value here so a hundred times adding one it goes to a hundred see so that's how you can spawn a bunch of stuff in the first frame of the hype you use the value use the for loop for as many times as you want to spawn an object in a randomized position um the spawner here all right
What more questions do we have? Uh, well, or there was a I... second part of that PT Jones question, which was about using pre-mades. And I mean, that's a, a pretty simple one. Yes, you can use pre-mades. Uh, if it's a pre-made that has multiple add-ons on it, you know, if you look at this basic builder panel, or not the builder panel, the basics details panel, and you have like a couple different add-ons there, you know, like the player character might have a health add-on and like a movement add-on, that kind of stuff. Then you just take the actual character, turn it to a reference object, target your spawner at that, and you can spawn as many of them as you want. Okay, yeah. Perfect. Um, and then I, uh, we might we might save this one for the next session. Uh, Wayward Traveler has some questions just about the transform. Um, but we're going to okay. do the next hour after this one is going to be all editor Q&A and uh, playtesting requests. <laughs> so uh, I can take a look at that one too during the next session since I don't think that really uh, did that relate to any of the things you showed. I'm not sure. All right. If you feel like, I mean, we have a little a little bit of time left. If you feel like just pulling out the transform node and, and talking about it a little bit, you know, go for it. Um, transform node. So about how the transform node works. The transform node is basically an offset node. Like if you know the meaning of the word offset, you know exactly what the transform node does. So uh, let's take this object here, for example, let's put it back at one and delete this, delete that, delete all that. All right. So let's use in no physics at zero, zero. <clears throat> and all right. So translate. Translate is about movement. Rotate is about rotation and scale is about size. So if we use the um, the transform node in this cube, like we set it to execute on start. If the amount is one, it will move the cube at one to the side. Like this is when the on start is off, it's at the middle. So when we execute the transform node with amount being one, it moves the cube one to the side. Okay, what happens if we move the cube one to the side again? So let's use the interval nodes for that. So after one second, it will move the, it will execute the transform node again with the amount one. And as you can see, the cube doesn't move after one because the offset is being set at one again. So if we, okay, so instead of using, um, okay, so let's do it this way. So take a look at where minus one goes. It goes there. So one is here minus one is there, and zero is here in the middle. Okay, so at the first frame, it will execute the transform on the right side, okay, on plus one. And then we are gonna set the amount to minus one and execute the transform. So what do you think is going to happen? So it goes there and then goes here. You see, it's not decreasing one to the middle, like it was one first and then, and then it got zero. No. You set the offset of the cube as one because the original position of the cube is in the middle. So you set the offset as one and then you set the offset at minus one, which is here. All right, so that's what the that's how the transform node works. So you could even, um, if you place it here, so the the original position is at 
x equals 1, it will go way to the right and then it, it will go to the 0 because the original position of the cubes here is at 1. So let's not execute anything, just to show you. So this is the original position now. And then if we execute the transform node with amount 1, it goes way to the right. And if we, after that, go to minus 1, it goes to this place here. Because the original position is here, and the offset minus 1 goes to this place here. All right? Very good explanation. <laughs> I think, I guess one thing to note there is if you're using rotation, then you have 360, to, well, you have negative 180 to 180. Um, yeah. And if you're using scale, well, you have, you know, zero to whatever. I think the transform can override the scale limits, which, by the way, uh, for people that have requested, the scale limits are being changed. So you will be able to scale things smaller and oh, yeah, bigger this... in a future update. Wait, wait. So the scale limits, like here? Yeah. So right oh. now the minimum is 0.25 and the maximum is what? I think it's 5. Yeah. And if I remember oh. correctly, don't quote me, but if I remember correctly, the minimum is going to be 0 0.01 and the maximum is oh. going to be 100. I think. Well, I could be wrong about that, but it's, yes, okay, okay. it's significantly more, more uh, what space that you have there, bigger and smaller. That's awesome. I, I really needed something like that. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people did. A lot of people did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, well, I think it. we are about out of time now. Uh, you have any final words for the people at home? Well, um, I, okay. So if I, if, I, if I have to say some final words, I want to wish you uh, I, I want to wish everyone a wonderful day, like stay, stay sharp, play some hype hype, there are some awesome games in there, and if you guys need um, any assistance, feel free to go to hype hype's Discord channel, Discord server, and there's a ton of people who are very willing to help you in learning how to use the, the editor. There you go. Good Discord plug. A great place to go to get some help. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thank you very much, Snive Viper. It was awesome getting some insights about your games and how you build things. And uh, I hope everybody at home has learned something and maybe uh, got some, gotten some ideas of some new things that they can do in their games.